Uh, no clarity yet, to be honest, Jeff. There was an expectation last night we would hear from Horst Seehofer, the interior minister here in Germany, after a series of meetings with his own party, the CSU, down in Munich. He never turned up for the press conference. We got a statement and said saying that he was going to be meeting with Angela Merkel. The deadline that he had set her two weeks ago has now passed in a, a rather entertaining set of circumstances. She had given a long planned interview to one of the major broadcasters here, ZDF. And uh, in that, she talked about the process she's gone through to try and come round to the CSU's proposals on migration over the last two weeks. Take a listen. Ich hab I challenged myself 14 days ago because I share the concern to, on the one hand, reduce the number of migrants arriving in Europe, and on the other hand, to prevent that asylum seekers can basically choose where they apply for asylum. I share the view that this cannot happen. That is why I tried to work toward a solution that is not one-sided, unilateral, without an agreement and at the detriment of a third party, but instead work at the EU summit to find common ground for a solution to the migration problem. We worked a lot on this and the CSU did partially prompt me to really try again and bring forward a European agreement. As such, I'm fairly happy with the result, even if there's still a lot of work to be done. And this is, you know, kind of the point. Last weekend, Angela Merkel called that emergency summit with more than a dozen different countries in Brussels. They came away with a bit of a framework ahead of the summit late last week in Brussels. And after that, we got that slightly compromised agreement on migration with all 28 European leaders signing off on it. She's brought that back to Germany. Initially, there was quite a warm reception from some members of the CSU, her sister party in Bavaria. But over the course of the weekend, we heard from Seehofer talking to some of his own party members that he did not feel he could have an effective conversation with Merkel, that she essentially wasn't listening, that the requests he'd made for his own measures head of the federal police here to close the borders to certain types of migrants were not being matched by the actions that could be followed following that European summit. So now we have this situation where he's going to be meeting with Angela Merkel, potentially talking about resigning over the course of the evening last night. What that means for her, also relatively unclear. But both sides have said in the past, and Angela Merkel said again to ZDF, she definitely would like to continue working with the CSU because, of course, she wants to maintain her majority in the Bundestag. Take a listen to what she said. Everyone knows it's serious. I would like the CSU and the CDU to continue to work together. We are a success story for Germany. Together we're strong and people have expectations for us. And that is the spirit under which I will lead consultations today. And guys, just to outline some of the scenarios for you here, if Seehofer does resign, there's a chance the CSU, his party, could find a replacement for him as interior minister and things would continue, quote unquote, as normal. Though, of course, those relations between the CDU and CSU would stay very strained. Alternatively, they could break up the 69-year alliance they've had with a lot of hold on power here in Germany in those seven decades. That would, in theory, mean Angela Merkel is left with a minority government. For that to continue and operate correctly, she would need, of course, to get a vote of confidence in the parliament behind me at some point. If that doesn't continue, if she fails to get a vote of confidence, in theory, the uh, President Steinmeier here could dissolve parliament and call fresh elections. Those would have to happen within the next two months. Um, just one other scenario to throw in there, Willem, and I, I just wonder how feasible this is. There are other political parties that were flirted with when it came to that conversation we had about the so-called Jamaica coalition in Germany after the, after the election. Is there any possibility, given that um, there are other views on migration across the political, political spectrum in Germany, is there any possibility that if this coalition breaks up, either the Greens or one of the other parties could be encouraged to come in to bolster a minority government? That's a very real possibility, Jeff. You're absolutely right. You could talk about parties like the FDP. In theory, we'd face this option for President Steinmeier to say to Angela Merkel, look, can you find another majority? Can you go looking for some other partners? The real challenge there, and that's one of the reasons that that Jamaica coalition talk fell down, was, of course, whether she would be the person staying in the chancellorship. And that seems relatively unlikely if she was to go looking for another party to join her CDU and, uh, you know, her other coalition partner. The question is, would they be willing to let her stay in that top job? Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.